Hello, my name is John Keedwell and welcome to the Speak to Camera webinar and welcome to you all here. Great to see so many of you here and there's a few people just still arriving but I think we will start because um, I realise your time is valuable and I hate to start late so here we go. Um, my name is John Keedwell, I am the host for this evening, I'm running this all by myself so if there's any errors or problems here um, it is completely down to me but let's crack on and uh, let's the intention of this webinar is to to help you understand why video is important and why speaking to camera is so important and also why you really need to do it if you're running a business or any kind of business at all you really need to get to a point where you are talking to camera connecting directly with the people you uh, or your customers or if you're running um, any other kind of business where you're you're getting a, a point of view across you still need to be able to talk directly to the people so why is this important um, by the way I will answer a lot of questions at the end I will take a few breaks during the event to to see what the questions are and if they're relevant I will I'll stop and I'll answer them there and then but um, really, I will continue because I realise that um, your time is valuable, so is mine. So I will attempt to make this under an hour webinar, which is I know is unusual, but um, or maybe around about an hour. So without further ado, let's carry on. So that we now filling up with a lot of people, so it's really kind of quite cool. Um, this will be recorded, so it is available later for you to take a look at. The biggest issue with people wanting to record themselves on video is the fact that I hear this all the time. If I had, you know, £100 every time somebody told me I don't like myself on video, <laughs> I would be a very rich man. There's many reasons why people don't like themselves and maybe you don't like yourself, which is po possibly why you've never done video in the past. Ultimately it's a combination of things. I will look at a few things this evening. Um, I won't go through them all but ultimately you get a flavour of what it's all about and why you feel your image on video is not as you perceive it. Ultimately it's very important to get a video image on to YouTube or whatever to have connection with your audience because ultimately you have a message you may not think you've got a message right now possibly or you may think I'm burning with desire to get this message out to as many people as possible ultimately your message is important if you have fears or hesitancy in terms of talking to a video camera I'm here to help you overcome that and your message is important because as as the webinar goes through you'll understand connection to your people that you're talking to is vitally important o on that note uh, ho hopefully I'm connecting with you all right now I mean I'm gonna go quite quickly through this so there will be questions at the end as I say very quickly this is a very very small part of history uh, this is relevant I'm not just blowing my own trumpet here this is some of the things I've been working on in the past um, in the 80s I did a lot of pop promos and live concerts I won't reel them off but um, if you look at the, the picture at the bottom the strip of pictures at the bottom the first one is Duran Duran I was only a runner on there I hasten to add I wasn't the director of photography then there's George Harrison if you don't recognize him in his later later years the HMS Manchester which is the ship I type 42 destroyer I went around the world Rin, pretty much next one is the purple man in the wheelchair you maybe can't tell he's in a wheelchair but that is actually in the room I'm speaking from now as it happens that was Roger Waters from Pink Floyd and we shot part of the video in this very room I'm speaking in fact pretty much where he's sitting actually I'm speaking from now the next one is a documentary about going from Cape to Cape that's a fire engine getting stuck in mud in somewhere in Africa and the five months on tour with Bon Jovi, which um, 
tends to get a lot of attention when I tell people that. That was about 25 years ago now, so that's quite a long time ago. But yeah, so a lot of documentaries, pop promos, and I'm also a BAFTA member. I vote on BAFTA films at the end of the year. If you don't know what BAFTA is, it's a bit like the Academy Awards, but the British version of the Academy Awards. Okay, hopefully you do know what BAFTA is. I think crucially, the biggest part of what I do is, uh, or was uh, particularly, was interviews. And this is an estimate, but it, 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 several thousand interviews. I used to do a very late night television program, which filmed mainly rock bands, Aerosmith, Led Zeppelin, you know, Motown, Judas Priest. I did the whole history of Judas Priest, went to the houses and did a whole bunch of stuff with them. Uh, I've also been inside number 10 down the street when Tony Blair was Prime Minister and into Boy George's house, John Cleese's house, Spike Milligan. All those people I've filmed inside their houses. So, uh, you know, some of the people you might recognise, some of them you may not, some of them aren't around anymore. In fact, quite a few of them aren't around anymore, sadly. But I had the, the pleasure of meeting Harry Seacombe and Spike Milligan and a few other people. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. So, I did a lot of interviews with people, and some people, none of the people here I hasten to add, but some of the people I interviewed were very, very happy to do huge rock concerts, let's say, in you know, 10, 20,000 people, yet you put a camera on them, and they were quite meek. I'm not going to say who they were, but you'd be surprised if I, if I told you you'd be very surprised that the people I'm talking about were quite shy in front of a camera. Also, I know people who teach speaking from stage and they can talk to th a thousand people, no problem. When they get to talk to a little piece of glass poking towards them, they have a very di great difficulty in communicating what they want to talk about. So, you're not alone. If you have a phobia, if you like, or if you don't like talking to camera and you find it intimidating for some reason, I am here to help you. I'll go later on, I'll tell you about some things I do on a, on a much bigger scale than a webinar. If you want to join me, I will be delighted to help you. So let's carry on. I've realised that we're running... <laughs> We've done eight minutes or so already and... Uh, so this is a view, possibly some of you have, this is a view of probably about 500 people there and standing on stage talking in front of 500 people. Now some people have experience of talking to say 5 or 6 people, 10 people, 20 people maybe. When you get to say two, 300, 400, 500, 700, 1000, it's a bit of a different matter. It's, it takes up a a bigger area and you have to connect with those people a, a lot more convincingly. So why am I telling this? Well talking to people from a stage is a skill that ideally you get to know by somebody teaching you properly. Um, I certainly did my stage training. I went to Bali to do it actually and Ultimately, that has developed the, my ability to talk to camera because the, the, the way you speak to people on stage is different to how you talk to people on camera, but there are certain similarities. We'll go through some of the things later that are different, but ultimately it is connecting with people on a one-to-one -one level on camera, effectively, or a one-to-many when you're talking to a camera you're effectively talking one-to-one -one. when you're talking on stage you are still talking one-to-one -one, as perceived by the people in the audience it just happens to be there's 500 people in the audience okay if that makes any sense you still have to connect individually to the people that's what i'm saying so why is this so intimidating to many people this is a particular large lens for this part of the presentation, but ultimately, this is actually about the size of a, of a zoom lens on a, on a proper broadcast camera. It's quite a big beast, and you know, there's a lot of elements inside a lens. So, however, it's still a piece of glass. 
that for some reason brings out huge fears in, in many people. Why would we want to be talking to camera in the first place? Well, you may have heard of the, the, the term e-learning. E-learning is a very huge part of what businesses are doing now. There's many reasons for that. I'll, I'll go for this in, in, in here. Online education is a huge business. You would not understand how much it's just grown in the past few years alone. And this has been used by entrepreneurs on a very regular basis. Sales online speakers and also large corporations are using it because they realize that talking one-to-one -one is great and it's lovely, but ultimately, if you want to get a bigger market, you want to talk one-to-one, -one, but to a huge market, if that makes any sense. Can I just ask a question? I'll, I'll just look in the chat box. Is this making sense to you now? Okay. Great, I've had lots of people. Oh, great! You may you may hear some of the the, the pings coming in with the, with the um the phone. Okay, yeah, I, I'll continue. Okay, so if you have a business that requires education or information to be dispersed to many people over a huge area, video is really the way to go. It really is. It is the most powerful tool. That you can do you do it once it's like doing a webinar i can then record it i can then play it back to people who couldn't make it for whatever reason and they can hear what i said it's it's a video of a screen capture so let's move on i'll go through a few of these because these are relevant these are some screen grabs from a company called udemy they are one of the biggest players in the online education market. You can get a program there for, oh, you know, Excel spreadsheets or how to, I don't know, make a garden. This is a particular one that um, I just picked around. A, I've got a few examples here. Building your home studio with examples. Now, this is, this is great for, for people who want to make their own recordings at home but they don't really know how to go about it this is a very reasonably priced course i have to say is udemy brought their prices down i think it's about a month ago the highest prices were about 250 most were about 100 or 97 or that sort of price i think now the price maximum is 60 and there's a lot at you know 15 or 20 pounds so and that's about for 20 30 dollars so there's many, many courses. That's that's ultimate. And and if you think you don't have any information to sell to people, believe me, you do. If you're listening to me now and you've got any kind of skill or knowledge in a specialist area or any kind of skill or knowledge, you have the ability to sell material online. This is not how to teach you to sell online. I have to say that. There are courses to do that. This is to teach you how to be able to make the video so you can sell online, if that makes any sense. Okay. Now, here's it's a course by somebody who's decided to make a course about training cats to get along in a multi-cat household. Now, you think, how big a market is that? Well, at the moment, I think it's quite a new course, this. He's had 783 people at the time of recording this. Um, 783 people have bought his course at £10 each. Uh, now, he'll get roughly 50% of that, so it's still, uh, you know, for making, uh, well, it's a fo less than an hour, it's 44 minutes of, of material. He's got a, a need, and he's got an audience, and he's made this course, and he's sold it, and he's made, I don't know, £3,500, I think, something like that. So, don't think you don't have a course inside you. If somebody can do a course about cats in a multi-cat household, <laughs> you know, th there's many more. I will carry on because here we have Weight Loss Mastery. Now, 
there are many, many weight loss courses online. Many courses. However, this is weight loss mastery for the busy professional. By the way, I'm not. I don't get any commission from this. By the way, if 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 you want to go and buy this course, then feel free. I do not get any commission. Okay, I'm not plugging these. I'm just picking them out as examples so you know. Um, now, ultimately, everybody knows how to lose weight. You eat less, you eat better foods, and you exercise more and drink more water. That's pretty much it. Um, however, there's still people. I'm not knocking it. There's still people who are four and a half thousand students have enrolled in this because it's a, a niche area. It's weight loss for the busy professional. It's not just weight loss mastery. That's the ten a penny. This is for the busy professional. That's kind of what my reason I brought this one in for because you find your niche and market it and and develop it so it's very specific. If it was weight loss mastery for people who live in Europe that's too too general so this is an audience that they've really tapped into and four and a half thousand people they're doing pretty well at that and again it's okay that's a three-hour course okay so that's quite a considerable amount of course this one snapchat obviously is a huge market nowadays it's a huge well well business potentially and six and a half thousand people decided to take a course on snapchat marketing now it's priced at 10 pounds it's it's it, you know it's 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 a it's a it's a pizza isn't it when you go out to for it's a pizza so if you, if that helps you grow your brand then it's that 10 10 pounds is a good investment now i don't know snapchat I probably would like to know more about it and if I wanted to find out more about it I would probably look on YouTube or I would look at Udemy. This seems a very well organized course and £10 you kind of go well that helps me. That solves my problem of not knowing Snapchat. So that's the thing you have to keep in mind. It solves somebody's problem. I hope that are we all are we all okay with this so far? In uh, I'll just have a quick look over here. Okay, yeah, everybody's happy. Uh, I, there's a few questions that come up there, but I will, I will keep on typing them in. I will look at those when I get to have a chance to see them in a minute. I, I will. There's some that are very similar, so I'll kind of tend to group them together if that's okay. If you're in the internet marketing or uh, building a brand niche, or if you if you have knowledge of building a brand you will probably have come across this guy called Gary Vaynerchuk he's a, a, a New Yorker he's written several best-selling books um, he has a huge following he is very influential um, he's a fast-talking blogging there's only one Gary Vaynerchuk for sure check him out the only reason I brought him in in, in this particular presentation is because he's a huge name if he is making videos on Udemy, there is a place for you as well. Because, okay, his, his course is slightly more expensive. It's £45 normally, it's down to 31 because Udemy often discount their course. But if Ga Gary Vaynerchuk, you see what happens is people use this course as an introduction to, to Gary Vaynerchuk. The fact I'm talking about him now means if you'd never heard of him, You'll probably go and look him up, and you'll go, "Wow, this guy! What you need to check this guy out." Again, I don't get any commission from Gary. Maybe, maybe, maybe I should. Uh, maybe that's a little niche I should look at, and actually put a little little thing at the end. But I promise you, I don't. Uh, these are purely examples of courses for you to look at. Now, why? What has changed to make making a video? What has changed recently in recent years to make that? different to what it is a couple of years ago a lot largely is because people want to learn when they want to learn they don't necessarily want to learn uh, at a certain time that of other people's desire they, they want to learn they may want to learn for 10 minutes a day 
let's say. So if you can develop it down into bite-sized chunks so people can learn, I just want to learn that one little bit today before I go off to work or on the on the train or whatever. There is a market as well, which I'll get to in a minute, because the promotion I'm doing at the end of this is a London workshop at the end of June. So there is a market for that as well. I'm currently finalising the shooting of my online course. Uh, that'll be ready sort of mid-June. But ultimately, th there's certain things you cannot teach just by online. And you need to have the, the physical experience of it. And that's what I'm doing at the end of June. So uh, there is space for both. There's th the online course is great. It works 24 hours a day. The courses where it's more experiential, it's more complicated because you have to have a venue, you have to get people in there. Um, it's much more intensive, it costs more, and by that means that the actual course costs more because it's very much more individualized for those people on the course. Also, there's cameras have got better and broadband speeds have got better so high quality video can be delivered I'll, I'll skip over this a little bit because it's it's not that relevant but all this is to say is 4k quality of televisions is a big thing in certainly in Britain uh, in John Lewis uh, and, and other very good establishments but if you go into there there are 4k more 4k televisions than normal but well, cool now normal hd i was not that long ago hd was the biggest thing in in television however nobody is yet broadcasting in 4k don't get hung up on what 4k is if you never heard the term before now it's very high definition much much higher than high definition television you are watching now however the data is huge the biggest thing now as you see in the picture on the bottom left is a thing called high dynamic range which is irrelevant if you're just doing a, a video for uh, consumption however the fact that people are buying 4k televisions means they're looking for visual quality and sound quality and if your video is higher standard than the next person's video and you're getting compared to them as a business your video will help you get the business over the, the person who's got some iPhone on a selfie stick waving around. That's my take on it. Again, the rise of 4K televisions. This is what the, the red arrow is where we are now. Second quarter of 2016, this is where we are now. And growing steadily. Uh, it's, you know, within, within three years, it's taken 20% of the market. So, it's growing all the, the large tennis championships are filmed on 4k the world cup the olympics have been for the past couple of years or you know certainly past two events the world cup the past two events so there's many things being recorded on 4k just nobody's nobody's actually transmitting in it yet but bring it on <laughs> however you don't need to shoot in 4k that's not what i'm saying okay let's move on now this is my favourite lady who looks very startled and you'll have seen in the information that you got from me before now. This is normally the look or the feeling that somebody gets when they're looking at a camera, at a video camera. Because if you don't control your experience of talking to a camera, if you don't control your emotions or your state when you go there, it, it's actually very difficult because you think, oh my God, I've got to remember all this script and I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, I've got to be a newsreader and I've got to be, um, um, you know, perfect, word perfect every time I, do, I, do, I talk to somebody and it's got to be, oh, wow, how am I going to do this? I can't do it, I'm, re I'm really frightened and I've got to remember all these long words. I'm here to tell you, you don't need to do that. There's a way of, of producing your video that will make you look one of the greatest speakers in the world um, whether you can string a sentence together more than 10 seconds at a time there's a way of doing it believe me if you listen to this well when it's recording uh, you'll realize that I am talking to you now literally 
the cue for what I'm about to tell you is the picture. I'm not talking from a script. I think you can probably tell that. I'm talking from what the picture tells me. And I could talk to you for about 20 minutes if I really wanted to on stage fright or camera fright. I'm not going to because we haven't got the time now. But ultimately, this is the biggest perception of, of people when they talk to a camera is the fact that I can't do it. And this is a very famous quote by Henry Ford. You may have heard this before. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. If you think you're scared of camera, if you think you can't do it, if you think you'll be rubbish at it, you know what? You'll be right. However, turn that around. And if you think you are good at it, if you know you are good at it, and you can do it and you have previous experience of getting it right, you'll be good at it. It's like anything, it's like driving a car. When you first drove a car or rode a bike, I'm sure everybody here can ride a bike, a bicycle, a manual bicycle. When you first got on it, you probably fell off a few times. You probably skinned your knees and your, your fingernails and fingers and stuff. However, anybody here could jump on a bike right now and you would remember how to drive a bike. It's like that. It's Once you learn it, you don't unlearn it hope that makes sense. Now, if you imagine all these eyes, these little beady eyes looking at you, that surely, it, imagine they were in your audience. <laughs> um, it, it'd be a really bad day if all those animals were in your audience because there's, there's a there's a shark in the bottom there, there's a there's a, probably a snake in there, there's an owl, there's um, a gorilla, there's a, I don't know what else is there really, but um, there's actually a human there. But they, these are all different eyes from different animals. And that surely is a very scary. If you imagine that combined with 500 people looking at you, at your every move on stage, that to me is more scary than looking at a little piece of glass to the right there. But for some people, talking to a little piece of glass is more scary. Why is that? I will show you how. Basically, I know why, because I developed with my, I uh, meant to say this before, but when I did my doc documentaries, I developed a system so I could put people at ease when they were being interviewed or when they were talking to camera. And I developed a way of keeping them in state, if you know what that means, but it's keeping their focus on what they're doing so they actually you know sometimes I've done 25 takes of somebody saying something very simple but if you get out of state they would still be doing it now so you I developed a system where I put people at ease and I've now since developed I did this quite a few years ago but I didn't know at the time I've now developed that into a system now where I can package it and actually tell other people about it so that they can go and use it that's you and it's everybody else who watches this webinar so Ultimately, here I am. <laughs> now, the tagline at the bottom kind of gives it away a little bit, but um, this is Abraham Lincoln. I'm sure you recognize Abraham Lincoln. He's one of the most famous men in history. All I've done there is reverse the image. If you look at both of those images for a minute, you can tell they're both Abraham Lincoln. However, if you look at them individually, the one I personally think, the one on the left, how he appeared to the world, looks more friendly, slightly. He, he's quite a stern man, but it looks a little bit more friendly for some reason than how he saw himself in the mirror. Now, clearly, his hair is not parted in the middle, so he has a parting on one side, which is quite normal, unless you're me, which I... I don't have that issue to deal with every morning. Uh, clearly, the, the lighting is from one side. So one side of his face is in slightly more shadow. So that's another thing to look at. But ultimately, it's quite a different image, I think. And whilst you can see it's him, 
imagine if you looked at one of those every morning and then you then other people showed you the other image of what you as you appear to them that's partly the issue many people who we all in fact see ourselves in a mirror every time you see yourself in a mirror you get used to seeing that image I'll show you in a minute after this about how we also get a distorted view of how we look and it actually is very distorted because we have a very distorted look of how we how we see ourselves and that is another part of the thing so we see ourselves reversed every morning and you know half a dozen times a day or more maybe 20 times a day for some people you see yourself in the mirror and you get so used to looking that so when you see a photograph of yourself it's not you don't think it looks like you. So here's the scary picture. This clearly is me. This has not been photoshopped. This has not been distorted in any way. This is straight out of my camera um, in my bathroom. The reason why I'm looking slightly in a skew with in the left hand picture is because I'm obviously concentrating on the picture in the reflection of the mirror. So I took this selfie very close up as close as I could get it with my with my phone and the picture on the right is taken in a studio now both of those pictures are me I look very different in both those pictures don't I for one the picture on the left my face is elongated it makes me thinner it makes my nose look bigger but you kind of tend to ignore that it certainly changes the shape of my head on this particular picture. Sadly, it doesn't give me more hair, but there we go. That's a, that's another issue. Um, but if you look at that on the left-hand picture, my ears disappear. And it makes me look thinner. Okay, the lighting is different, but okay, it's daylight coming in on the left, and it's studio lighting on the right. However, this is something I want to get over to you now. Photography and video isn't just about flat lighting like on the left I couldn't help it in that situation because it, it was daylight coming in the window but the picture on the right there's three or four lights on there to, to make that image look you know three-dimensional or appear to be three-dimensional and that is ultimately what you need to do with photography and video and for people to say oh yeah just light it flat like on the left is it's very bland very boring okay it shows up my wrinkles a bit more on the right but hey so that's one distortion when you too when the camera is too close to you when you see yourself in the mirror we tend to look at that sort of distance so we always see a, dis a distorted view of ourselves so that's another reason why people don't like the way they look because they it makes them in their mind it makes them look thinner here's another view which is a little bit scary taken roughly at the same time this is often the view you see when people are doing um, using their laptop to do a sort of a, a webinar or some kind of you know video discussion. The camera is below them, looking up at the ceiling. And if you don't believe me, I've got some examples of that in a minute. It elongates your chin. It makes you, my chin look fatter now, ironically, um, and it really my shape my shape of my head is the shape of a pear you know the top of my head is much further away relatively to the camera so it's not a flattering look and in fact I'll probably get off that right now so here's a few real life examples of people having those issues uh, and these are not the worst I these are ones I thought I could show you but the, the ones that are really bad are oh, just shockingly bad um, these are some of the issues you see on the left here top left you, we're seeing the ceiling we're seeing the curtains behind okay that was a, a very rough rough and ready webinar that somebody did late late at night but ultimately why have a video camera if you're gonna look at that like that the, the lighting is coming from below which is very threatening actually as well which I won't get into here but when you light somebody from below it's a bit like Dracula the picture on the right top right um, it's a little bit better he's lit you know quite you know reasonably well um however we're still seeing the ceiling 
on the wall it's very distracting and actually I don't want to tilt it down a little bit to get his chin in a bit more but anyway the other two the the, the bottom left it, that and that's shot professionally in the studio but you look at that and you go well actually to be picky he's got well first of all it's a very blue color he's very his skin tone is very sort of blue even though he's wearing blue he's very blue and that makes him look a bit ill he doesn't look that great to me he you know he looks a bit so ill to me and also that the light is reflecting in his, in his glasses the guy on the bottom right he's reasonably successful but he has a very loud and brazen sort of uh, the way he speaks and you know to be quite honest I look at that and go his, his eyes are right in the middle of the frame I would have tilted it down a bit and actually got a bit closer because ultimately it's like he's got this massive big headroom above him. Anyway, just being picky. Here's some more. These are more examples. This is one of the examples of somebody teaching how to talk to a video camera. Now I've seen most, if not all, of the video how to talk to video camera seminars and webinars and courses online because I, was, I wanted to see what was out there and what things people are teaching other people to me I don't know about you in fact, in fact it, I'll just um ask a question do you think that is a good picture I'll let a few questions come through T to me I think that is so distracting I'm wondering who's going to walk in through the door I'm wondering why he his face looks so pink yet sort of blue he looks like he's been jogging but he's still blue that's partly to do with the camera how the camera sees things which I won't go into now but it's an auto exposure and auto white balance and he's he's, he's not really understood that also some distracting things bottom right and there's you just look and go this is somebody teaching people how to make videos on camera this is actually one of the biggest people on Udemy this is just a screen grab again don't um, <laughs> Don't go and subscribe because he, what what he teaches is is not professional. He's decided to make a course on it basically. If you look at this, look at the title: better video lighting. And then you look at the quality of the picture. He's this is somebody who sold 140,000 units of his course or courses. He's written a course about how to make your first million dollars online. And sold it on Udemy. And got I know fifty thousand people where it is. Yet, look at that picture. That is his a screen grab from the video. What does that pic? In fact, do you tell me in the chat room? What do you tell me? What's wrong with that picture? Yeah. He's got a fan growing out of his head, which is illuminated, so he he looks like some kind of. Well, looks like he's got a propeller on top of his head. Let's put it that way. The lighting in the room, it's very, dis again, it's distracting. You're not looking at what he's talking about. You're not looking at him. You're looking at, like, what's that picture on the wall? He's obviously shooting this at night because the windows are drawn. And, yeah, he's a very pink-faced sort of person. What, how has he lit that? And it's this is about better video lighting. And he's teaching people to make better videos and that's what he's teaching them crazy go and look it up online if you want but don't buy it this is another the selfie version this is a version again a screen grab from a video i just picked this particular at random really this is again do you think this is a good if he was showing you how to cure cancer then fine but he's not he's actually talking about how to talk to camera on video now he's obviously holding it with both hands he hasn't got even got a selfie stick he's got a bit of background action that really shouldn't be there and it's overexposed in the background and he's fully fully face now all of that detracts from what he's saying to me and half of what he says probably won't go in because you're so busy looking about all the other stuff that it won't go in so let's just um 
move on because realize time is getting on now. Uh, this is to illustrate a point. We can all go and buy a camera. We can all go and buy bricks, mortar, and a trowel, um, a, a spirit level, and a you know all the rest of it that goes with making a wall. Does it make us a bricklayer? Now, I could probably make that wall like that. I could probably make half decent. I've done it before. You know, it's a skill. I'm not saying I'm a bricklayer, but I could do something like that. I wouldn't. Uh, it'd take me quite a long time, but um, compared to a bricklayer. But ultimately, I could make a brick wall. However, I couldn't make that. I'm sure most of you, unless you're a bricklayer, and you've got, got a lot of time, I'm sure you couldn't make that either. So what we end up doing, a lot of people, is we buy expensive cameras or expensive equipment, and it ends up looking like that. It's functional. It, it holds a wall up. It holds things up. However... If I was to show you that as a professional bricklayer, would you employ me? No, no, everybody's shouting in the, in the chat room, no. No, of course you wouldn't. Yet, that is, if you equate that to a video, that is the equivalent to me of making a video that is not professional looking. See the analogy now. If you make something that is not professional looking, if somebody sees that, they'll go, that's not professional, what else are you doing that's bad? If you have a bad video, your perception is you will have a bad product. Let that sink in. I'll say that again. If you have a bad video, the perception is from the viewer, potentially, is you'll have a bad product. If you don't take time in making a video, you won't take time and effort making your product. I'll just let that land while I go into the next one. So, how I teach what I do, it's not a particularly about the technical aspects. There is a, a, an element of technical aspects too, because you need to know that, but Ultimately, I teach about your message. I teach you about defining your message. I teach you about your mindset. I teach you about how to get your mind around the fact that you are not talking to a person, you're talking to a piece of glass, but you are talking to a person through the camera. I also teach you examples of how to speak and how the language you use when you're writing a script because how you speak is different to how you write a script. And it's very important. If you write a very fancy script that you can't speak, and then you attempt to speak it, it will fail because people will know you're reading it. I think, as I said before, I think you can tell I'm not reading this script. I'm, re I'm reading a few words off the page now because it's making a point. But ultimately, I'm not reading a script. I think you can tell that. I teach you professional techniques and make it easy because some people get really hung up on what camera should I use and what codec and what microphone and what lens and how do I edit it and what, you know, all the stuff like that. Ultimately, a camera is a box with a lens and a sensor and you stick a microphone in it and it records what you say. How you do that is you can there's layers on top of that like lenses and lens angles i've shown you a few examples of those today of what not to do and the equivalent professional version next to it and how different it looks so you can shoot it with the same camera and two people can shoot it and get somebody gets really good results and somebody gets pretty bad results uh, i tell you now they actually shot a Bentley commercial, in fact several Bentley commercials on the iPhone. If you look it up, again, I, if some, if you buy a Bentley because of it, then uh, please send a few quid my way, but if you look it up on YouTube, just do, do a search, iPhone 5, Bentley commercial, you'll see it's yours shot in New York, it's in black and white, very nicely shot. The point I'm making here is it's shot with professional techniques. It's still the iPhone, and you can see the video how they shot it. 
it is shot on the iPhone 5. However, they used professional operating techniques, professional camera mounts and professional lenses on the camera like, like the one on the top right there. I don't get too bogged down in technicalities, but I'll show you this is if you want to do this, this is what you do. And at the end of it, I, I it's very efficient, it's very concise learning. It's very, very bang to the point. Like I'm talking to you now, basically. So I'll get to this again in a minute, but this this is a workshop I'm running at the end. If you thought you're going to get to the end of this and I wasn't going to get, give you an offer, then obviously you, you're sadly mistaken. This is if you can make this great. I would love to see you there. This is not I'm not going to heavy sell it. This is something I'm running on the 25th and 26th of June in London. The venue is yet to be finalised, but it will be in London. Um, if you go to that link now bit.ly speak to camera workshop it's only open for a certain amount of time during this webinar it will close at the end of the webinar I might make it available to people on you know a special code or something to people if they they re-watch the web webinar but ultimately it's it's live from 7 till 9 tonight that's it you know it's a very special deal you will not get that deal anywhere else if you look at the other two prices on there, they are significantly more than if you get this deal and you've, you've looked at this webinar. Anyway, let's carry on to how I teach things. This is a rather action-packed mishmash, really, of, of pictures, but they all have a relevance. As I say, I'm running my course. I'm, I'm actually recording my online version of the course. It'll be about two, two hours or so of online version, which will go out probably mid-June 2016. So you may be watching this and it's August 2016, in which case it will be out by now. But at the moment it's the 23rd of June. Uh, sorry, 23rd of... Um, I'm getting mixed up. It is now the 23rd of May. This is a webinar in the evening on, on 23rd of May. By the end of say mid-June it will be out, tested, and it will be available. Maybe by the end, actually, of, of May, but it will be certainly be shot by then, edited, and editing will be going on but this is how I teach people as I said before a lot of it is about message self-perception getting over this the blocks of self-perception of which we've touched on a few tonight the difference between talking on stage and video if you look at that it's very very small part of it is a technical aspect only one module is lighting cameras and sound that's a you know a, a quarter of the content, and that's cameras, lighting, and sound. Now I could talk all day about cameras if you really wanted me to. You probably go to sleep, but ultimately I teach you professional ways of doing it, so you can take your iPhone or your any kind of camera, make a video, and make it look a look a million dollars. By and I, I even teach you on a course as a way of making a light for under twenty five pounds which is what that is, $35 or something, $40, and making a very, very good light that is cost-effective, very good, made, made by uh, an LED light. So it's a very good color LED light because LEDs and fluorescent lights are, again, the color temperature is a bit various on some LED lights and especially fluorescents. That's way, way much too complicated to talk to about you now, but this one I know is a very accurate colour. So your skin tones are rendered very, very accurately. And that's very important. If you, if you, unless you want to look green and you want to look a bit ill, then that, that's fine. Use any old light from B&Q or somewhere. But ultimately, get LED lights that have a, have a good colour rendition. Um, and it's, this is about your brain, this is how your brain works, and how you, you connect bad experiences and you put a label on it and you, you, you make that label real by putting it in a box, into, into a folder. We want to kind of break open that box and, and shatter those things because ultimately talking to a camera is no more difficult than talking to somebody else. It's a conversation, like, a, like okay, it's me talking. And, and occasionally ask you some questions but ultimately you're talking and it's how you express yourself the Einstein picture there in the middle the sort of it looks like a plaster 
picture, but it's not. If you come on a course, or when you come on a course, I will explain what that is about. That is, that is quite profound. When you see that for real, for yourself, your eyes play tricks on you, and you, even though you know what's happening, your brain still tricks you. Okay, I'll say no more about that. Come on a course, and that will blow your, blow your mind. There's actually several things that are on a course that aren't on the online course because they, they can't be demonstrated. So ultimately, it, th there's a whole load of stuff you can download at the end of it, PDFs. It's how you see things. It's how you record things. There's there's ways of learning that will embed it, and you can build your script. You can build your message and get it out there and ultimately get your message out to the world. Help other people solve their problems. If you help one person get over a problem that is stopping them and they then go on to great things, isn't it worth it just to get that out there? And You know, I get so passionate about it because ultimately video is such a great tool for this. You can make it more fancy, you make it more exciting than standing on stage and it works for you 24 hours a day. Very briefly, when you, the, the, the lessons I teach you in this are evergreen. Once you know the lessons, you can do it again and again and again and uh, again. And you'll get many years of life. The, the information won't go out of date. It'll be, it may develop over time, but ultimately it won't go out of date. I'm devising more courses, but ultimately now my prime focus for this year, for the next few months certainly, is helping you to talk to camera. So when are you going to join me? So I think we have time now for some questions. Um, I actually re originally did a presentation. <laughs> this presentation is based on it loosely, but um, I've added to it since then. I actually did it on May the 4th this year, 2016. And if you don't know the kind of gag, it's May the 4th be with you. That's why I've put that there. And obviously Yoda is a wise being. So please, I'll leave this on the screen now. This literally is only available from seven o'clock when this webinar started to nine o'clock. I think I put it out. It will not be available outside those times unless I change it. Um, the prices you will see it is a genuine offer. I've knocked a considerable amount off the early bird version, and the early bird version runs out on the 29th of May. I know that because the 29th of May is my birthday. Presents will be accepted if you'd like. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, houses in the country, and Range Rovers, please. Um, so ultimately, I'll leave some. So it's a Bitly link. It goes straight to the uh, Eventbrite. Eventbrite is a separate pay system. I don't control it. What happens is it's like a third party. It's a bit like PayPal. The you pay in there to Eventbrite. I hold the event, and they only pay me after the event happens. Okay. So I can't just run away with all the money. Okay, not that word, but just to put your mind at ease. So I'll leave that. So I'll answer a few questions because we've run a little bit over the hour now. So um, questions. Um, oof, blimey. Okay, let's just have a quick look while you're jotting down that um, bitly link. One question, which was actually two questions, but I'll make it into one. What's the difference between the online course and the this speaking to camera workshop? Well, the, the simple answer is the online course is about two hours of material, but kind of packed into you know a webinar uh, in, in, into a a video series. It's made down into small bite-sized chunks. So as I said before, you can say listen to a five-minute piece or a ten-minute piece and then do something else. It's not watching an hour-long video like this will end up being <laughs> it'll it's not like watching that or having to watch it and then go back to oh where did I get to oh, I don't know you can do modules you can do small parts of it and it logs however you go um, so you know where you're up to in the course so you can pick it up at any time 
you could also go back on it you can look at it again and again and again and uh, again and it's you can watch that till the cows come home however it's two hours of material now I can't possibly do justice to some of the things it will give you a very very good insight into like some of the information I've given you tonight but I've only touched on things tonight it gives you an insight into talking to camera some of the issues it obviously I've not told you how to because that's a much much longer element to it how we do it on the the camera workshop is we go through everybody's individual script so it's a very small group of people I help you individually develop your script I then help you to re uh, record something onto video we then hone it we go through it we then go through it's a real kind of coaching weekend um, and because there's you know a certain amount of people on the course um, that takes some time you end up the, with the end of the course so you end up with a video you can take away uh, you know a two-minute video you can use for your presentations it'll be professionally recorded you can use it with our compliments and you can tell people about your presentation about your passion around the world if that then brings you loads of money great I'm sure you would tell other people how you, you manage to do that and point them our way ultimately it's a very much more experiential course the workshop is very very much more physically doing it as opposed to this is how you do it if that makes any sense does that answer your question yeah thank you um, it is a two-day course I looked at making it a one-day course I think there's too much to do in one day course I think there's way too much I think we're pushing it to get it done all in a two-day course actually I was uh, the, the, this co that's one thing actually, I actually want to ask you a question I had the option of doing it during the week so maybe a Tuesday and a Wednesday let's say or Wednesday and Thursday um, I'm interested to see how many people will be interested in that as opposed to a weekend because I've realized that some people are doing this for business so there's you could go okay I'll do this for business I'll take Tuesday and Wednesday off um, now with the nature of courses at weekends they tend to get booked up um, as in locations and actually venues there's only 50 weekends in a year of course so they tend to get booked up very quickly and I, I'm, I'm now looking at July for some other events and it's in London it's quite tricky so I've had to look at other places however I can find things during the week quite easily because they're all empty so I, I may run one if there's enough demand for it I could run one on let's say a Tuesday and a Wednesday in July I don't, I don't know dates yet but if that's something that could interest you please let me know um, um, you, you'll have a way of re responding uh, because all emails come in and it goes out through a responder um, or if you want to send a direct email to me um, as it's you you can do um, it's epics Academy UK at gmail.com I do get to read that uh, the information that goes to that email is specific for um, communication alone so I don't get I don't subscribe to loads of stuff so it's purely for instant um, response to people hopefully that's made sense um, I will leave that on the screen for a few, few more seconds but a couple of the questions are really about specifics um, that really would take much longer to explain because I realize that people uh, it's been an hour now and um, I think we should wrap it up here now because uh, the, the, the course coming out in June I will tell everybody on this webinar 
what are the details of the course there will be a special offer i don't know what it is yet the, oh yeah that's one point one question here was what is the price of the online course it is at the moment it will be priced at 197 pounds it will be around about two hours or more maybe two and a half hours of material with video templates to download like sheets that i use that i use to keep a track because when I'm shooting something a, a video you think you're going to remember the take that was the right one forget it the day later you've forgotten it so I there's the sheets I use I've I've made so you can use them for yourself there's ways of making your script there's a whole bunch of stuff you download and um, there's special bonus material as well and so uh, that should be ready I'm, I'm i'm saying second week of june but that uh, that's possible if everything goes right it will be up online in june early june so um watch your space so, uh, so the price is 197 so it's it's obviously cheap less expensive than the workshop because the workshop is so much more labor intensive and the costs are if you i don't really know but the cost of hiring a venue in london is huge per day yeah you know uh, and it's for a weekend and it's means staying overnight and it means parking cars and all this stuff it the, cons, the costs are considerable which is why i was thinking of uh, oh, the other thing was actually uh, i tend to do courses in central London now there is opportunities for doing courses in say Manchester or Liverpool um, or Cardiff or Birmingham or Glasgow Edinburgh Dublin Belfast Paris Bali wherever I don't mind if you think there's a market and you you can help me fill a venue I will look favorably on that and if you say oh it's all in London I'm also looking at doing a two-day or maybe a three-day residential course which is a little bit out of country so you're not having the costs of London but it would mean you know staying overnight in a in a very nice country residence I was actually looking at one just today in fact near where I, I live and it's it's actually well I'll t if we use it I'll tell you about that later so that's pretty much me uh, i my voice is going i need a coffee i think so please join me if you want to ask me questions about the course whether it's right for you or whether you you can't make those dates please please get in touch and there will be more i don't know when they'll be i would imagine that there may be another one in July, but July and August tend to be a bad month for for seminars. Traditionally, they are people go away on holiday and they go, oh, I can't make that, and I'm planning for my holiday, so I can't go away on a Monday. It, it's it's a very hard time, people. So mm, uh, there may be one in July, August. There may then be only one in September after the one in. June so I don't know there's nothing planned yet is the answer to that question um, I also by the way the question here was coaching individually yes I do get in touch with me about that and we can see what your real needs are and see if it's appropriate and see how I can help you I'm sure I can um, clearly that's much more labor intensive and time consuming than we can do a Skype thing we can do whatever we we, we can if you if you wanted to have a course made specifically for you you have specific needs yes I can I can put modules in I can drop modules if you if you know certain parts you don't need to know them um, if you want specific training on cameras lighting there will be other events later on in the year but please tell me what you want if you want to have 
a weekend of purely lighting and playing with the camera, understanding how it works, getting getting so you know what all the buttons do, and getting to know it so you can really get the best out of it, then then please drop me a line. Um, I don't profess to know every single camera on the market, but at the end of the day, a white balance button is a white balance button. But if you need to know what the white balance button does, and why you need to use it, and why you need to use different white balance settings in different scenarios, if you don't know that, that's very important. If you do know that, it's like falling off a log. Anyway, I've rabbited on enough. So, please um, get in touch. If this is not for you, uh, this is not, as you've seen, this is not heavy sell. I would love to see you there if you've come this far and you've actually got to this point where you listen to what I'm saying now. Uh, I, I would like to think you would come along to workshop. If you can't make it, let's work something out. I would be delighted to have a whole load of people by the end of the year who I've taught how to talk to camera and speak to camera and have them and you out there delivering your videos around the world and being seen around the world and your products it would make my day and 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 quality quality videos i will be more than over the moon so thank you very much for your time i hopefully haven't kept you too long I will hopefully speak to you soon individually and thank you very much for watching and listening. Goodbye. Have a good evening.